I love that Trump is taking credit for a recovery that started under Obama, but the substance of this, who is this economy going to work for? And we had a tax plan that was all about giving the wealthiest people more, more of a break. My vision for this country is that we will target things like a massive increase in the earned income tax credit to actual workers. We've got to make sure that this is a shared recovery, because right now it definitely is not. There is Democratic Senator Cory Booker wants the nomination, meanwhile, believing that President Obama is the one responsible for kickstarting the current boom, which took off under President Trump. Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House, author of Collusion and a Fox News contributor. How you doing, Mr. Speaker? Good morning to you. There is the book. And here is Larry Kudlow, who wasted no time going out over the weekend and responding to Cory Booker's comment. Watch here. The point I'm making is it's the blue collar people that have the fastest job expansion okay. and it's the blue collar people that have the best wage growth. So what Mr. Booker and some others are saying is simply not true factually. That's all I want to make point. Oh, size it up right now. Trump's taking the credit. Apparently, Cory Booker doesn't think he should. Go ahead. Well, first of all, Larry Kudlow uh, coined the phrase prosperity cycle, and I think that captures what's going on. Uh, we cut taxes, we cut regulations, we encourage businesses, we particularly encourage the dramatic development of energy. Uh, we now have dramatically bigger exports. Uh, actually, the most recent data is that the poorest one-fourth of the country is getting a bigger pay raise than our people uh, in the upper uh, income levels. So th this is the right kind of recovery. Blue-collar workers going back to work, manufacturing growing dramatically. Uh, and I think the fact is that anybody who is serious knows that none of this had anything to do with Barack Obama. Obama's policies and the policies of the Socialist Democrats are policies of high taxes, big regulations, anti-business attitudes, uh, and they had led us to a very, very weak economy, uh, averaging about 1.6 percent growth. Trump has beaten that every single quarter since he became president, and it's getting stronger and better. Uh, and I think it's sad that the Democrats can't learn anything. You know, if you're, if you're so busy despising your opponent, uh, whether it's in football or baseball or basketball, if you can't learn from your opponent when they beat you, uh, you have a real hard time in the next game. And it's clear that Cory Booker is learning nothing, doesn't want to learn anything, and just goes out and repeats rhetoric that's false. I wonder if you saw the Wall Street Journal polling number that came out over the weekend. Approval of the president right now is at 46 percent. You want that number higher, certainly, but handling the economy is at 51 percent. How do you move column A to column B, Mr. Speaker? Oh, I think, pers I think persistent effort. I think uh, the president, remember, he's, he's just coming out from under 92 percent negative press coverage, a two-year investigation that turned out to be totally phony. Uh, I mean, I don't know of any president in our lifetime who's carried as many negative burdens from the political class as, as uh, President Trump has. Uh, and I think that's a very important thing to remember. Uh, the, the savagery and the hostility of the left has been unlike anything I've seen. And I would say, as Alan Guelzo, uh, the great historian at Gettysburg College said, you have to go back to Lincoln and the savagery of the slave-owning newspapers to see the kind of intensity we saw against Trump. I think as we get beyond that, his numbers are going to keep going up. Uh, as he continues to do a good job, his numbers are going to keep going up. Uh, and as people realize, you know, you may or may not like his style, but you sure have to like his results. Now, one more point here. See the New York Times piece over the weekend. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, I think it came out on Friday evening. Here's the headline. Pelosi warns Democrats stay in the Senate or Trump may contest election results. The article's interesting. Here's what I think is the key quote. Uh, for reflecting on midterms, she does, and looking toward 2020, our passions were for health care, bigger paychecks, cleaner government, a simple message. We did not engage in some of the other exuberances that exist in our party. I think you you know to what she is referring you had that job go ahead and analyze um, how she has done and whether or not she can keep her team on message look she had better hope that Joe Biden is the nominee if that's what she wants to achieve because nobody else is going to have any chance of doing what she just said this is a party which now stands for 
uh, infanticide, killing babies after they're born. Uh, it has one of its strongest now candidates calling for allowing terrorists and murderers to vote while they're still in prison. Uh, it stands for abolishing all private uh, health insurance, which is about a 15 percent issue. Uh, you can go down item after item, and the Democrats are running rapidly uh, to become a party of about 15 to 20 percent support on the issues. So she's right in terms of her language, but I don't know that she can control her party because all of the energy and drive is on the left. Sir, thank you for your time. Come back soon, okay? Newt Gingrich, former thank House you. Speaker. More Thanks. to analyze ahead. Thank you.